Cassini arrived at Saturn on June 30th, 2004, after traveling seven years across the solar system and flew uh, within 15,000 kilometers above the dark side of the rings. And it was during this period that uh, we slowed the spacecraft down so that it could be captured into Saturn orbit. And immediately after the engine burn for that maneuver was over, we pointed the remote sensing instruments down at the rings and took the highest resolution images of the rings that we uh, ever collected, even to this date. During this period of time, what we saw a lot of were waves. These are the waves created by the gravitational disturbances of external moons. Uh, and we got to see these uh, structures up close. We also, during this time, got to see the effects of uh, the moon pan in the Enki Gap, creating uh, wakes in the ring material on either side, a just tremendously glorious picture, a picture that was so pristine, so crisp, that when I first saw it, I thought it was somebody's computer simulations of the rings and not the real thing. Titan was very hard to figure out from a distance. It's always a hazy day on Titan. You can't see shadows, so we couldn't use the tool that planetary scientists and planetary explorers had been using for 50 years of exploring planets and taking images, and that is measuring the heights of shadows and knowing the direction of the sun to see what's up and what's down. We couldn't do that with Titan. We did see clouds. We saw a cloud complex in the south polar region of Titan, so that indicated atmosphere processes, maybe even rain. Of course, it was when the Huygens probe descended down through the atmosphere of Titan that we really got to see up close what Titan looked like. We saw dendritic drainage patterns that were unambiguous indicators of fluid erosion on Titan. And those images helped us understand what we were seeing with our images from orbit. Some of the pictures of Titan that I love are uh, pictures that we've taken of Titan at high phase where Titan is a crescent and we, we've done this in color so you can see the beautiful blue uh, detailed hazes, high hazes that Titan is now known for. Um, uh, and I love the radar images of the dune field on Titan. It's like the Great Saharan Desert uh, uh, wrapping around the equatorial regions of, uh, of Titan. That's a phenomenal picture and a phenomenal discovery. The moons. The moons are places. That's what I think and feel when I see our pictures of the moons. They're not just scientifically interesting bodies to study. They're places that I could go to. I could, if properly equipped, I could walk on them and crawl on them. And, and that is the allure of exploring planets. You know, in that sense, we have everything in common with the explorers of old who explored the Earth. You know, all the pictures of the moons are, are special in that sense. But, you know, now I have to say my favorite is, uh, is Enceladus. I just, th those towering jets coming off the South Pole of Enceladus are just, it's the most spectacular geological phenomenon we've discovered anywhere, I think, in the solar system. We think that those jets are, are possibly geysers. That is, they're derived from chambers of liquid water. Now, that's being debated right now. Some people say no, but still the, the phrase or the idea has popped up that this terrain at the South Pole of Enceladus is like, you know, the interplanetary Enceladus geyser park. <laughs> you know, the place we might go to, our, our you know, uh, progeny might go to generations from now to, uh, you know, to go on vacation. What we're seeing here is Saturn eclipsing the sun. So sa the sun is behind the disk of Saturn. You can see the refracted image of the sun coming from around the limb because the planet's atmosphere actually acts like a lens. So you see that. You see the main ring system backlit. So you have um, sun diffusing. The sun is on the opposite side of the rings as the spacecraft. The sunlight is diffusing through the rings. So you see them backlit. They look brilliant. You can see rings here that you can't easily see at low phase when the sun is at your back, like uh, the G ring and this 
outermost ring is the E-ring. This is the ring that is created by the spray coming off Enceladus. And then to top it all off, as if that wasn't brilliant enough, you can see the Earth through the rings from across a billion miles of interplanetary space. So that, this has been our most popular picture. This is the one that I think people just emotionally resonate with immediately when they see, because there's something very powerful uh, about seeing ourselves from afar uh, and capturing the sight of our own little planet floating you know, against the rings of Saturn. And um, I think it moves people. Thank <laughs> you.